there, welcome back. Just straightening up a little bit after my last project, getting ready for my next one. You know, in the shop and in the videos, I've made a lot of different kinds of doors. I've used different joinery techniques, different profiles for different looks. I've made panel doors, I've made clear panel doors, I've made solid doors. But one thing all the doors had in common they all swung on hinges. But you know what's interesting to use sometimes is a sliding bypass door. You'll see them sometimes on things like stereo cabinets and some cupboards, jewelry display cases and things like that. But they have a lot of other applications. In fact, any place where a swinging door might encroach on the space that you need or where it might be in the way or might even be a head bumping hazard, a sliding door is a good choice. So let's see how to make sliding doors, the tracks for them, and how to install them. Let's get going. I recently remodeled the upstairs of my house and in the hallway upstairs the former owner had built in some recessed bookshelves. It was a great idea to utilize some otherwise unused space. Unfortunately he just didn't do it very well so in the process of doing the remodel, I went ahead and ripped most of that out and redid it. I squared the opening, relined it, I framed it with some trim, I caulked it and painted it, and it looked pretty good. So then I installed some pilasters so I could use adjustable shelf clips and put in nice, clean, white laminated shelves but it really needs to have doors on it because my idea is to store linens and towels and things because you see these shelves are directly across the hallway from the bathroom door. Be really convenient. Unfortunately, the hallway is a little narrow and swinging doors are frankly out of the question. So this is a perfect place to put in sliding bypass doors and that's what we're gonna build. In another video series that you might have seen, I built a bath vanity for the bathroom and it features maple with walnut accents. Now in the second room upstairs, which is now become my office, there's a closet that has doors that are white with white semi-transparent glass panels, what many call privacy glass. So in order to make a smooth transition down the hall from the bathroom or to my office, I decided to make my sliding bypass linen cubby doors from maple and use a matching semi-transparent material for the door panels. Now the doors can be simple in design, but they're going to be pretty heavy, so I want to use haunched tenons for the construction. But before I can start building the doors, I have to first decide how I want to make them slide. Now there's all kinds of ways to make a sliding door. The simplest way to make one is just to cut a groove or a dado in the base and make a door that just slides in the groove. The problem is, is that can get sticky. Now, if you finish the bottom of your door and maybe put a little wax on it, it might go a little bit smoother, but it's still not going to be really an elegant solution. For sliding bypass doors, I think the best solution is rollers. And that's because, well, rollers roll. They move so smoothly. There's a couple of different kinds of rollers that can be used. Now, there's rollers that mount on the top, and then the door just sort of hangs from those rollers. 
That's a great way to say retrofit a closet or a door in your house where you don't really want to mess up the floor. All that's really involved on the floor is a little guide that just keeps the doors from swinging back and forth and they're relatively easy to install. The other way is to have the roller on the bottom. Now that means that there's a track on the bottom and a track on the top, but rollers on the bottom tend to be the smoothest rolling doors in my experience. Probably not appropriate for a closet or someplace where you're going to be walking because the tracks can get dirty. But in a cabinet application, they're just about perfect. And I found some pretty inexpensive hardware. Let me show you what that looks like. The hardware that I found to use for my sliding bypass doors is from a company called Hafel or Hafiel. I'm sorry, I'm sure I mangled that. It's H-A-F-E-L-E, -E, and I apologize for the mispronunciation. But the hardware itself is actually pretty cool. This is one of the bottom units, two per door, of course, and you see it has a roller in the bottom, nylon roller, and a little tab that sticks out. The little tab goes into this track, which you also get from the same company, and the roller rolls virtually friction-free. Really nice. Also, there's a small adjustment here for the height of the roller that might help a little bit in the fitting. There's an upper piece. This upper piece has a little tab, and it's notched. And you can take this tab and raise it different heights for your top rail and this tab just rides in the top rail to keep the door from rocking. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of adjustment. Here's the problem. There's really no directions whatsoever with this hardware. The only thing that's there really is a line drawing that shows the dimensions. Now I can tell you that the diameter of this is 35 millimeters, the same as a European cup hinge hole that you would drill. The only difference being is that when you drill this hole, you drill it off of the piece of wood just enough so that the edge of your door is lined up with this flat on the hardware. And I don't know exactly where the center of the hole needs to be, but we'll figure that out. The other thing that's a little difficult is not knowing all of that, it's hard to figure out how much I should deduct from the opening height of the cabinet from the doors themselves to make them the right height. It's going to be a little bit of a trial and error. Also, there's nothing in there that gives me the dimensions of the groove for this track. So that's going to be a little bit of trial and error too. But not to worry. By the time we get through going through this, I'm going to develop a little spreadsheet that you can download. And all you'll have to do is put in the height of your opening and it'll deduct the right amount to tell you how tall to make your doors so that this hardware, if you choose to use it, will work perfectly. You know, I've been fiddling around with this for a long time, but I think I've got it figured out. I've made an awful lot of test cuts here. But uh, to start with, the first thing that I wanted to know was how to drill the hole for this round roller assembly. And I didn't want a real tight pressure fit because I was afraid it would be hard to get it out. Um, these things have got these little ridges on there, and it's supposed to be a really tight pressure fit. So what I did was I drilled a 35 millimeter hole and then I just used a Dremel tool with a sanding uh, disc on it and I went around and sanded it out so I'd have a loose fit. And I put it in there and I figured out a couple of things from that. First of all, to drill the hole in the correct location, the distance from the edge of the board to get this just right where the flat on this roller is exactly even with the edge of the board, this actually, the point of your uh, bit needs to be 
just a smidge over a half an inch from the edge of the board. And that turns out to be really pretty easy to do because if you take your combination square and set it at a half an inch, put it up against the edge and then use a pencil to make a mark, the width of that pencil mark makes that whole location just about perfect. The depth of this needs to be just actually a little less than a half of an inch and that makes this flush. Now this one is not full depth because I wanted to be able to get it out easily. But if you drill down to just shy of a half an inch, that'll be flush. And the way to do that is to make an actual half inch mark on your board and drill down to where you're just shy of the line and it'll work out pretty good. And here's what is interesting about this. When you get the location correct, this little tab that fits in this groove on this rail is actually almost perfectly dead center in the edge of the board. Now, that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to use three quarter inch stock for my rails and styles on my door. So the next thing that I needed to do was figure out how to cut grooves for these track pieces. And the reason that it took a little noodling out is because I wanted to make sure there was enough space between the two doors where they can slide past one another without hitting, but not so much space that it looked sloppy. So after some experimentation, I found out that the width of the groove needs to be 5 sixteenths of an inch, and it's an almost perfect fit. The depth needs to be 3 eighths of an inch and again that's an almost perfect fit when you make them 3 eighths of an inch deep and 5 sixteenths of an inch wide. So where do they need to be positioned? Well if you have 3 quarter inch stock that you're using to make your doors and you imagine that the center line is in the center of this rail that means that half of your 3 quarter inch stock 3 eighths of an inch will be on this side and 3 eighths of an inch on this side. Same over here, over 3 eighths and over 3 eighths from the center line. And I decided that 1 eighth of an inch of space between the two doors would be good to give it enough room to slide past one another. So if I wound up with the distance between the centers of these two grooves at 7 eighths of an inch, that should be just about right. The only thing then to figure out is to where to sit the fence to make these grooves. And I cut these with a single blade. I just made three passes until I got the width correct. But remember that you've got a saw kerf. In my case, my blade makes a 1 8 inch wide saw kerf. So it wound up that my first cut which was with the fence at the farthest distance away. This would be my first cut over here. And then when I turn the board around, this would be my first cut. When I went the other direction, my first cut wound up being at 13 sixteenths of an inch. And if you think about this being at 13 sixteenths of an inch from the edge, and a one eighth, one eighth inch saw kerf that makes this edge of the cut in ex almost exactly 15 sixteenths of an inch. And it is 15 sixteenths of an inch from this side as well. So we're in 15 sixteenths of an inch here we know that we need this to be 5 sixteenths, so all we got to do is space over, and in my case it was till I got to 5 eighths of an inch, and at 5 eighths of an inch, that was where this cut was made, and on my third cut, the width was correct, and the depth was correct, and the distance between them was correct. Because if you'll notice, I drew a center line on each piece here, and the distance between the center lines is exactly 7 eighths of an inch. Now I know that sounds a little confusing, but in the spreadsheet that I do, I'll try to clear this up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to understand, but I think I'm ready to cut the grooves 
to make my rail stock. Okay, to make the rails for the tracks for my bypass doors, I could use really any kind of wood, but it's going to be painted. Um, so I'm just going to use some poplar that I found in one of my stacks. No reason to use my good maple wood for that. Um, the reason I'm painting it is so that the uh, bottom track and top track will kind of blend in with that cubby hole cabinet and the only thing that you'll really see what your eyes will be drawn to will be that beautiful maple on the doors. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to rip this poplar stock down to two and a half inches wide and uh, then I can cut my grooves for the uh, track itself. All right, the next step in cutting these grooves and making these guide track rails is I want to remove the riving knife from my saw because this is not going to be a through cut. And then I want to lower this down to the height that we determined we needed, which is 3 eighths of an inch. And then set the distance that we determined which was what? Oh yeah, I wrote it down. 13 sixteenths of an inch. This is going to make, let's get these tracks out of here. This is going to make the inside cut right here. It's going to make this cut and it's going to cut about one eighth of an inch over in here. And that looks like just about what we had set up. Maybe move it just a smidge over. That looks perfect. Okay, now with my blade set, I'm ready to run this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through this direction. I'm going to turn the board in for end and run it through this direction. I'm going to do that with both boards. And then I'm going to move the fence to widen the kerf until we get the width that we're looking for for this track. We just turn the board in for in and cut the other track rail through. And we'll do the same thing with this board. All right, and then the next thing that we want to do is we want to move it over incrementally uh, just to take out the next section. So we're going to wind up with the uh, scale here at 5 eighths of an inch. We know we've got an eighth of an inch kerf, so I can basically move this over just a little shy of 
an eighth of an inch and hog out some of the material in the middle of these uh, grooves. wider. Okay, and then lastly, my uh, fence will be set at exactly five-eighths of an inch. And what we'll do here is we'll just conduct a little test just to make sure. We'll just run that in part way. Just make certain, yeah, that's a nice fit. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now you may be wondering why I didn't use a dado stack for this. Well, the simple reason is, is I just didn't feel like making the changeover and this goes pretty fast. You don't get quite as pretty a bottom in the uh, bottom of the groove, but for this, it doesn't really matter. It's never gonna show and nothing's gonna ride on it. So this is gonna be fine. Okay, with the grooves cut, I sanded this since it's going to be painted, and I'm ready now to put the tracks in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue along the bottom of each of these grooves just to make sure the track sort of stays put. And obviously this track is way too long, but it'll get cut off when I trim the rails to the length that we need. So let's get this little bead of glue in here. I'm not going to worry about spreading that out. It's going to be fine. But what I do want to do is make sure the track gets fully, fully seated, perfectly seated. And the reason for that is you wouldn't want your door to ride up if this track was not fully seated in any one spot along the rail. So to guarantee that that doesn't happen, I'm going to clamp a scrap on top of this and make sure it stays down nice and flat. And just let that sit for a few minutes. All right, while that's sitting, let's take a look at the wood we're going to use to make the doors. As it turns out, the last time I milled lumber happened to be maple, and I milled too much, which is good because now I have exactly what I need to make these doors. Now, I had saved some pieces because they had some areas of very specifically straight grain that I thought I might be able to use in the future, and sure enough. Um, like this board, for example, if you look at just this half of the board, right up to where this knot is, this is really, really straight grain. It's beautiful. Now, there's a little curliness over here, but this is really straight. And that's the section I'll use out of that board. Kind of the same thing over here. I've got a section here with really straight grain and a section over here that's not so nice. Uh, there's also a little bit of wood here on the outside that's real light in color. And I'll cut that off. And I should be able to get at least one style out of that. Same thing with these two boards over here. Even this little short board uh, taking out this section right here, the rest of this almost looks like it's quarter sawn. So that's the wood I'm going to be using. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go upstairs, I'm going to take some samples of different widths of maple, 
hold them up at that linen cubby and decide how wide I want to make the rails and styles. I'm guessing two and a half, two and three quarter inches, but you know these doors are pretty tall. They're over 60 inches high. Not like a full size door, but still going to be pretty heavy. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. We're out of time. I appreciate you watching. Be sure and come back for the next one because we're going to make these doors. We're going to cut the haunched tenons and we're going to cut the grooves for the inserts. And remember, the inserts are going to be a frosted glass type material. I think they'll be really pretty. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Again, thank you so much for watching.